So let's jump right into the show, right? Our first guest has been leading the fight for comprehensive civil rights for all people for many, many years now. We won't say how many. The Fairness Campaign is Kentucky's LGBTQ advocacy organization founded way back in 1991 by 10 Louisvillians, and they have come certainly a long way since then. Joining me now is Chris Hartman, Executive Director, right? I mean, I was just a baby when this all started, <laughs> well, right? Claudia, I mean, yeah, we were both in yeah. diapers, right? Thank you for not saying how long it had been no. because I wasn't even around in 91. <laughs> I'm actually, I mean, truthfully, I'm thinking back to when you all passed Fairness Ordinance, what, 1999? Nine. Nine. Nine, the Fairness what Campaign, a... the first in the state. And before New York City even? Well, said? so New okay, York clarify. beat us. Mm -hmm. New York protected lesbian, gay, and bisexual folks from discrimination since the 70s. So they had us beat by a couple of decades. But they didn't include transgender folks mm. until 2002. Louisville's ordinance in 1999, the first in the state, one of the first in the nation to include our transgender community in those important discrimination protections. You know, we think back and think, wow, that was a long time ago. But wow, it was a long time yeah. ago, but but very new. Like when you look right. back, do you think, wow, we got that done? Well, and of course, I wasn't at the Fairness Campaign in 99 when they accomplished it. But well, you when were I, diapers. Well, <laughs> when I came in in 2009 as the organization's director, certainly it was already steeped in the mm -hmm. history of that incredible movement that was also intersectional at a time when anti-racism really wasn't being centered in the national LGBTQ rights movement. At the Fairness Campaign, it always had been. And that's how we won uh, earlier than so many other places in the nation. Right, and you had a community that was open to right. that, right? I think a lot of people around the country, when you tell them you're from Kentucky, they go, oh wow, what is it like to live there? But then when I begin to explain mm. what our environment, don't you think that's certainly played in your favor that we've had yeah. leadership in this community that have said, yeah, Chris, we'll and, consider yeah. that. And openly LGBTQ yeah. elected officials since the 90s. You know, yeah. Judge Ernesto Scorsoni from Lexington, our first openly queer member of the Kentucky General Assembly. But here in Louisville, we had the first openly LGBTQ elected official in the entire Commonwealth, mm -hmm. and that was Tina Ward Pugh when she first won uh, that alderman seat in 1998. And now she's running for county clerk here in Louisville. Talk a little bit about like the bigger picture of what the things, because I know you advocate for people that may not be familiar with Chris does, he, not only here here in Louisville, but you're, you're, you're in Frankfurt a lot, right? <laughs> you're in Frankfurt, you're advocating for a lot of bigger picture, statewide items. What can we do in Hazard and Harlan, mm -hmm. right? Like, what does the picture look like elsewhere around Kentucky? You know, it's tough. It's still tough. And honestly, it's getting harder. We faced our worst legislative session in Frankfurt in recent memory just this year. They passed the first anti-LGBTQ bill in more than a decade this year by banning trans girls from playing on girls sports teams in Kentucky schools. It is a, a perilous prospect of what our chances are in Frankfurt. However, mm -hmm. we know that there are pockets of support all across our Commonwealth. We've got 23 Kentucky communities now that have banned LGBTQ discrimination where folks live. And the numbers are increasing. I'll get you 24 and 25 before the end of the summer. Yeah. And yet, that still only covers about a third of Kentucky's population in terms of discrimination protections for LGBTQ folks. That means in just about 70% of Kentucky, you can still be discriminated against for being LGBTQ. You know, where do you, th you think there's just so much, there's not enough information out out there that there's a chorus of people saying, well, let me tell you what this is really about, right? Is that what happens, that there's, there's not enough of the truth out there that you feel like the counter to that spooks and scares people, well, like know, with the transgender <clears throat> uh, athletes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. let me tell you what it is. And, and they beat everybody to the conversation. Right. It's like, well, wait a minute, that's not what this is at all. That's the problem is that there aren't truths mm. out there, that the other side has done a very good job of creating a lot of lies and myths about our community. And it worked for a long time against gays, lesbians, bisexual folks, because many people didn't have those individuals in their lives. Now, that's not the case. However, for our transgender community, the numbers are still not high enough that everyone knows and loves someone who's trans. And that's why the other side has been able to seize upon really ignorance, which yeah. really creates fear, right? Yeah. And then they play on that and they pass these awful bills like the one in Kentucky. Conversion however, therapy. Oh, right? well, of course, is I that mean, still that's out there? another rabbit yeah. hole. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we still have banned have conversion hour. therapy. I know. <laughs> but Louisville, Lexington, and Covington at least have banned the practice of conversion therapy, mm. trying to turn an LGBTQ kid straight. Yeah. They banned it on my from licensed therapists in those three major cities, but the state hasn't done it. 
talk about like the truth. One way that you kind of spread the truth is you recently did um, here at WHES. We have like these training seminars yeah. once a month where we hear from a speaker in the community on diversity, equity, inclusion. You were one of our speakers that which spawned this idea to have you on the show today where you get out in the community and you, you talk frankly and openly about creating Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a peaceful, coexisting, nurturing, <laughs> loving workplace environment. Who knew? Yeah. Right. And training and, and just those discussions, that must go a long way. Just having the conversation yeah. in the workplace creates an environment that says, we're going to treat you with respect here. Um, we may not always get it right, but we're going to make the effort. And that's what goes the, the furthest. Yeah. And I know you got lg &E on today. We just had a lunch and learn with lg &E last week. We just talked to Keen Footwear about a week and a half ago. So there are companies that are hungry for these conversations. Yeah. And let me tell you, the workers absolutely are too. And we know that folks do their best job when they can bring their whole authentic intersectional self into the workplace Creativity every day. flows, people are happy, it, it creates workplace retention. I mean, absolutely. we could go on and on. Like Chris, like I said, we only have an hour. Oh, come on, And our, our time here has just flown by. But thank you so much for stopping absolutely. by. And we just felt like it was really important to have you kind of kick off our Pride show and, and set the tone for what this, this show, this hour yeah. is about, that we have a lot more to learn, and that's okay, and we want to learn more. So thank you for all you're doing. Happy Pride, Claudia. Happy, Happy Pride, Pride y'all. I know. Happy Pride, y'all. <laughs> well, hey, if you're listening and you're thinking, you know what, I want to reach out to the Fairness Campaign and, and maybe have Chris come by and, and do a training or, or talk to my workplace, he can do that. So to learn more about the issues and the causes, you want to reach out to Chris, uh, just go to fairness.org.